Hi, welcome back to Enzyme Kinetics in Biochemistry and Physical Chemistry. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to go over the derivation of what is known as the Michaelis-Menten equation. All right. So over here on the very top of the screen, let me go ahead and box this because, oops, that's the wrong box. Let me go ahead and get the right one. So this equation that's up here, this chemical equation, is generally describing uh, the overall mechanism or what we'll say the overall reactions um, or parts of a reaction that enzymes do. So anywhere in this that you see an E, that's the enzyme, S is the substrate, and P is the product. Now, what generally we say is that the enzyme and, and substrate are initially separate. That's why you see an E plus S here. However, E and S, the enzyme and substrate, can come together, and we, we generally say that the substrate is binding to the enzyme. And when the substrate is bound to the enzyme, we generally refer to that as an enzyme-substrate complex. And notice it's not E plus S, it's ES. And the ES is designating that the substrate is actually bound to the enzyme. They've essentially formed a complex together. And notice the enzyme plus the substrate is in equilibrium with the enzyme substrate complex. And each direction of the equilibrium is governed by a constant, K1 and K minus 1. Right? Now, the enzyme substrate complex, once this forms and you get the transition state, then it's basically a one-way reaction and you get the enzyme and the product. So the product is forms and it dissociates away from the enzyme. This is governed by the equal, or not the equilibrium, the, at least the rate constant, I should say, the rate constant K2. And by the way, if you ever see K2 in the context of an enzyme, generally what that is also called is K cat, where K is catal or excuse me, cat is catalysis, so K cat. So this K2 appears K cat. And this is the Michaelis-Menten model for all of enzyme kinetics, okay? Now, there's some very important uh, assumptions that we're going to make going into deriving a rate law um, so we can figure out what the rate of this reaction is overall. Number one, when the enzyme and substrate come together and form this enzyme-substrate complex, what we're going to assume is they come together and form it, and we basically assume that the enzyme-substrate complex, as soon as it's formed, the very instant it's formed, the reaction occurs and the product is produced. All right, so in other words, we're basically saying that this enzyme-substrate complex literally exists either for zero time or it's negligible. It really doesn't exist at all. So what we're essentially going to say is the concentration of the enzyme substrate complex is essentially going to be kept at zero. Okay, it just is formed, and as soon as it's formed, it dissociates um, when it reacts with the with the substrate and produces the product. Okay, so what we're essentially going to do is we're going to start with something called the steady state approximation. Okay, the steady state approximation says that this intermediate right here, this enzyme substrate complex, this intermediate the change in the intermediate with respect to time is zero. So we need an expression for the change in ES with respect to time. Well, what is it? Well, we notice that K1 is resulting in the formation of this, so it's positive K1 times the concentration of the enzyme times the concentration of the substrate. We also notice that K minus one leads to the decomposition of ES. So that's minus K minus one times the concentration of ES. And then K2 in the rightward direction also results in its decomposition, so it's minus K2 or K cat, enzyme substrate complex. And since we're ultimately setting this equal to zero, then all of this, this, um, this sum right here, have to equal zero as well. But what I'm going to do, all right, so number one, what I'm going to do is I notice that right here, this is enzyme substrate complex, this is enzyme substrate complex. They're both the same term there, so I'm going to factor. Um, the ES out, and that's going to be minus a K minus 1 plus K2 times the enzyme substrate complex plus K1 times E times S, and that has to equal 0. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this term over here that's subtracted and add it over to the other side. So what I get is K1 ES is equal to K minus 1 plus K2, all of that times the enzyme substrate complex. All right. Now, one thing that's important to realize is when we're talking about this just E by itself, it's very important to understand what that is. 
We talk about E, what we generally mean is we're talking about the free enzyme, okay? So how much of the enzyme is free not bound to the substrate? If it were actually bound to the substrate, then that would be the enzyme substrate complex, right? But it's not bound. We're looking at free E. So we want to figure out how much free enzyme there is, okay? So if I want to do that, the free enzyme not bound to um, any substrate has to be equal to the total enzyme, right? The total enzyme, let me do it like this. This is the total enzyme, and that accounts for the enzyme bound to the substrate and the free enzyme. And that's subtracted off, of course, from the enzyme substrate complex. So you could take the total enzyme minus the amount that's bound to substrate. So anywhere I see this concentration of enzyme, I'm basically gonna take this term right here and ultimately substitute it in. So I'm gonna substitute it in for this value of E right there. And then ultimately what I get is K1 times total enzyme minus enzyme substrate complex, all of that times substrate is equal to K minus one plus K2 times enzyme substrate complex. Now, generally when you do the steady state approximation, whatever the intermediate is, that's what you ultimately want to solve for. <coughs> so what I'm gonna do is since enzyme substrate complex is the intermediate and I can't really measure it, obviously, I wanna get it by itself and get everything else in terms of it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, what I'm gonna do is foil this out, um, this term right here, foil this out, and then I'm gonna get all the enzyme substrate complexes on the right side. And what I get when I do that is I get K1 times the total enzyme times the substrate concentration is equal to K minus one plus K2 times the enzyme substrate com uh, concentration plus K1 times ES times S, okay? And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna factor out the enzyme substrate concentration. So K1 times the total enzyme times the substrate is equal to the enzyme substrate concentration times the quantity K minus one plus K2 plus K1S. And then I'm gonna take this term right here and divide it through and get it on the other side. So what I ultimately get is the concentration of the enzyme substrate complex is equal to K1 times the total enzyme times the substrate divided by K minus one plus K2 plus K1 times S, all right? Now, one of the things that you can actually do is if I basically take the both the numerator and the denominator and I divide by K1, right? So let me actually take all of this and divide by K1. Notice that the K1 and the numerator number one cancels, right? And this K1 cancels with this, and then I'm ultimately gonna get a K1 under here. And that's actually what you see for this, okay? It turns out that this quantity, K minus one plus K2 all divided by K1, this is a very special um, uh, a constant in the context of proteins, it's called the Km value. So if you have K minus one plus K2 all divided by K1, that's equal to Km. What exactly is Km? We're gonna go into this a little more in other videos. Km is actually a concentration. And it turns out that Km is the substrate concentration at one half of the Vmax. And we're gonna look at that in a little more detail later. But Km is the substrate concentration at one half of the Vmax or the maximum rate of the enzyme, okay? So that's really important to understand. And so ultimately, I get this whole thing over here is just equal to the concentration of the enzyme substrate complex. Now, there's another um, thing that's also very important. It's talking about the rate of the enzyme. If you go back up here to the original um, place where we're describing the general reaction of a, of a michaelis menten enzyme, you see this K2 or this K cat, notice that if you wanna talk about this last reaction here of the enzyme substrate complex where it catalyzes the reaction and releases the product, you would talk about it in terms of the derivative of the product with respect to time. So how do we do that? Well, you just take the rate constant, which in this case is K2, and be multiplied by the enzyme substrate complex. But this derivative right here, the change in product with respect to time, that just is the rate of the enzyme, or V. So I'm gonna take this right here and I just put it down here. So the rate of the enzyme V is equal to K2 times the enzyme substrate complex. 
Well, seeing as I can't really measure anything with the enzyme substrate complex, what if I just multiplied this times K2, which means I have to multiply, I have to multiply the top times K2, right? Because I have to multiply both sides by the same thing. Then this quantity right there is just the rate of the enzyme. And that's what I have right here. So the rate of the enzyme V is equal to K2 times the total enzyme times the substrate concentration. And then this whole thing, remember this was just the Km plus the substrate concentration, okay? Turns out there's another important identity. If you take K2 times the total amount of enzyme that you have, the concentration of the enzyme, that product is the maximum rate of the enzyme, or the Vmax. So anywhere where I see this, oops, I messed that up. Anywhere I see this, I'm just gonna replace that with Vmax. This is already replaced with Km, and so ultimately my rate of the enzyme, which remember is just the change in product with respect to time, but that's not important. The rate is Vmax times the substrate concentration divided by the sum of Km plus the substrate concentration. And this, this essential rate law is called the Michaelis-Menten equation. Okay, and it turns out that any enzyme, which turns out to be most of them, that, sat that follows this general um, type of rate law is called a Michaelis-Menten enzyme. There are certain enzymes that don't follow this. They're, they're more on the rare side. They're not as common. They're called allosteric enzymes, and they follow a different type of kinetics. But if they follow this type of rate law, they're called Michaelis-Menten enzymes. Okay, now, if you actually were to graph if you were to graph um, the, a plot of the rate versus the substrate concentration, so rate is on the y-axis, substrate concentration on the x-axis, what you get is something referred to as a hyperbolic curve. Okay, and the only thing, I'm, the only other thing I'm going to do in this video is go over kind of in general the curve. Okay, so how do you read this curve? Well. You have this curve here that represents the rate of the enzyme at different substrate concentrations. So say I wanted to find the substrate concentration, or I want to find the rate at this substrate concentration. Well, all I do is I find, go to this substrate concentration and go up to the, the curve, and then whatever this rate is over here, that would be the rate of the enzyme at that substrate concentration. Now it turns out that when you have a curve like this, Okay, it doesn't actually diverge. That's, a, that's sort of a calculus term. That means it goes off to infinity or something like that. It actually doesn't. This, this curve actually converges to some value. And so there's a line right here. This is sort of what I would call an asymptote. This is an asymptote. Okay, it's going to go off to infinity in this direction, the rightward direction. And the curve is, is going to approach it. So it's going to approach it more closely and closely and closely. And you could say, at what substrate concentration does the curve actually hit um, this asymptote? And because it approaches it, it never actually hits it. But for the most part, we say that whatever value this curve converges to, that's the Vmax of the enzyme. Okay, so it turns out that if you were to take this curve and just let it go ultimately to infinity, it would basically approach this asymptote or this line, this horizontal line up here represents the Vmax. Okay, now so if this is the Vmax right here, then this over here, this line, this light blue line, this would have to be one half of the Vmax because it's halfway up to the Vmax, right? And it turns out that the substrate concentration at half of the Vmax is the Km. So if you had a curve like this or were able to plot it to figure out what the Km is, you go over to where half the Vmax is, kind of go over to the curve, and then go straight down, and then this value over here would be the Km. And the Km will be in whatever units your substrate concentration is in. Okay, and that's how you figure out the Km graphically. Um, we'll talk about in another video um, how to figure out precisely what the Km value and Vmax are, and that's um, using something called a line weaver Burke plot. We're not going to do that in this video. We're actually going to do it in the, one of the upcoming videos. Okay, but anyways, this is the graph of a Michaelis-Menten enzyme. Okay, of rate versus substrate concentration. Okay, and it turns out this equation right here, the Michaelis-Menten enzyme equation, you're going to be using it a lot in undergraduate biochemistry when you're doing enzyme kinetics. Okay. So one thing they can ask you to do is, given some of these values, calculate substrate concentration. 
or say what substrate concentration yields the maximum rate of an enzyme or something like that. Okay, And also one thing to keep in mind is remember this uh, quantity especially, that if you have K2, or also called K-cat, right, times the total enzyme concentration, that's equal to the Vmax. Okay, so hopefully this video gave you a little bit of intuition on enzyme kinetics and where the rate equation for that comes from. It comes from this principle that you have E plus S in equilibrium with the ES complex, which then forms the product and dissociates. Okay, so hopefully this video made sense. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel. My name is Kevin Tolkoff. Join us in the next video where we're going to go over some more on enzyme kinetics. Thank you.